My name is Eva Perlman, and I've written a book called Eva's Uncommon Life, Guided by Miracles, which recount my survival experience during the war. When things became dangerous already in 1940, the Germans were invading France from the north. My father's boss said to him, I want you to leave Paris, take the archives of our office and take them away south of Paris. My parents decided we have to put the children somewhere. And my mother found a home for children in the mountains of southern France. My mother came to visit several times and the last time she came, she received a, an urgent message from my father, stay up there, I'm coming. My father had decided Lyon was too dangerous for him. He rented the upstairs of a house that was inhabited downstairs by our landlord and landlady and their two daughters. He also found three farmers who each were willing to take one of us children in case the Germans came to Autran. And on Bastille Day, we went up for a picnic to one of the mountains in the area. As we were eating, German planes flew over us and started bombing our valley. So we ran down the mountain, and my father decided that if he was to die, he would die with a weapon in his hand. So he and his male friends enlisted in the underground resistance forces, left the women and children to fend for themselves, and then, Miracle, the Germans came to Autran, but they waited until the men had gone. Thank God for that, because they would not have made it. The next morning, our landlord called my mother from downstairs. We had one entrance to the house. My mother came down the stairs, coming to meet two Nazis. They wanted to eat in the house, and they wanted a place to sleep. The landlord said, well, they can eat with us. We will give them their meals. But why don't you, he said to my mother, give your bedroom since your husband is away. My mother had no choice. She went to the attic, spent two weeks at the window of the attic because she had no news from my father. She figured that if by chance he was coming back to Autran uh, at night in order not to be seen, he would come and probably uh, throw a pebble against the bedroom window upstairs to alert her to come downstairs to unlock the door. So she, she never slept. I don't know how she did it. I feel we were divinely protected. There is no other way of putting it. Um, and then she had a bicycle accident which saved her life. Again, just God sent, because had she gone on, she was going straight into German lines and the, the Nazis had completely destroyed the whole area around Grenoble. They had killed everybody. We owe our lives to several French non-Jews who helped us at the risk of their lives, including the Montonex in Clairefontaine, that house for children. Also to my father's boss in Paris, my father had established a secondary office in Lyon so that he was continued to be paid part-time all through our hiding in the mountains. And I owe such a debt of gratitude to all these people and, and our landlord and landladies who knew we were Jews. I always ask myself, if I had been a 10-year-old child in 1942 in that camp in Auschwitz, I don't know how I would have survived. I ask myself all my life, you know, why were we preserved so miraculously when so many people were taken and perished? And in my 80s, thanks to the March of the Living, I discovered that my purpose in life is to tell my story and to become a Holocaust survivor speaker. We are the last generation uh, who, who still can remember something from the war. And after that, even the people with the number on their arm will have disappeared. But it is important to remember, to remember the story, never forget. And it's um, important to, to transmit it to the next generations. And so the people I talk to, and especially the students, become my eyewitnesses. And it, be it becomes their, uh, hopefully, their job to forward the, the education, to tell them what happened. And I think that an exhibit like this one is, is absolutely excellent.